When you think of farming, you probably think of this. Huge swaths of land with large machines dotting the landscape. But as climate change comes more into focus and our population continues to grow, we're going to need to find new solutions around farming. And a promising new technology is called the container farm. What is a container farm exactly? They are closed environment farms built in the same, well, containers that we use to ship our goods across the world. But they're not just boxes full of plants. They contain sophisticated systems and technology to provide a continuous supply of produce, rain or shine, 365 days a year. But how exactly does a container work? Are there potential drawbacks? And can it actually be scaled to help us build out a more sustainable and secure food system? Traditional farming is a vital resource for us. But let's face it, it's got some issues. While synthetic fertilizers and chemicals have increased productivity of our crops over the last century, they're hardly sustainable. One of its worst byproducts is nitrogen oxide. First, it's a huge source of emissions, but it also depletes healthy soil. And it's the culprit for all those algae blooms you hear about from farm runoff. Industrial farming also uses tons and tons of water. Just to put it in perspective, in California, 40% of the state's total water is used for farming, versus 10% used in all of its cities. And yes, that includes LA. Lastly, getting produce from where it's grown to hungry mouths is a long journey that involves a sophisticated supply chain and lots of shipping emissions along the way. Not to mention, as our population grows to the expected 9 billion by mid-century, the UN estimates that we'll need to produce another 60% more food just to feed everyone. A central question is, where are we going to get all that extra land? As it's estimated that we already use half of all habitable land for agriculture. And that's why solutions like container farms are so appealing. You can grow tons of produce in a fraction of the space you'd use for traditional farming. But just how much, you might ask? So within a container farm, our annual production is equivalent to about two acres of farmland, all within a 320 square footprint. That's Derek Baker, the senior industrial designer at Freight Farms. Just to put that into perspective, two acres of land is 87,000 square feet. Compare that to the 320 square feet of a container farm, and that means a container farm is growing the same amount of produce on 0.3% the amount of land of a traditional farm. And what can you actually grow inside a container farm? We've grown everything from rhubarb to pumpkins to uh, strawberries, uh, hops, and beyond. In one container, at the same time, you could grow 10 to 20 different varieties of lettuces, basil, oregano, chives, parsley, arugula, some of the best wasabi arugula you've ever tasted if you're into spicy herbs. And for all these diverse crops, they've set up a rotating planting system so that each week, without interruption, you can harvest, say, up to 1,200 heads of lettuce or 150 pounds of herbs. On top of that, because of the small space, it only takes one to two people to operate each container. And remember how we talked about how much water traditional farms use? You may be wondering how much container farms use in comparison. We're using about 99% less water. So within our system, one of our freight farms, you'll be utilizing anywhere from zero to 10 gallons of water per day. To put that into perspective, 10 gallons of water is the same amount you use in your average daily shower. One of the first things that people are intrigued by when they step into a container is the light itself this amazingly vibrant purple light. And as Derek explains, there's a reason for that. The reason that they're purple instead of the yellow or white that you'd expect from the sun rays is that we're isolating specific wavelengths of light that have been proven to promote photosynthesis. We're able to sort of like grow the plant in a very customizable way by exposing it to these different wavelengths of light all while saving energy because we're not putting any wavelengths of light into the farm or into the plant that won't be utilized. We're trying to hone in on basically the best aspects of nature and, and provide them to the plants in the most efficient way. These attributes, while a big improvement over traditional farming, 
aren't that different from what you'd see in a large indoor hydroponic farm. What makes it truly unique, and the answer is pretty obvious here, is that it can be shipped to anywhere in the world. We really need to think of a way to decentralize our food system. When you look at the way that food is grown and produced and shipped, most of what you're eating, no matter where you're located in the, in the countries, is grown in California and shipped to you. So by the time it gets to you, it's lost a huge amount of nutrient content as well as impacted the planet with the amount of fuels it takes to get to you. So what container farming is trying to solve is attempting to bring food production closer to the community by quite literally having the farm located within the area that it's serving. And that can have profound impacts to areas that may not have access to local produce or where farming conditions are less than ideal. Take, for instance, one of their customers' Bright Box Farms in Kodiak, which is a remote island off the coast of Alaska. With their container farms, they can produce vegetables all year round, and even with sub-zero temperatures outside, and have become less reliant on importing produce from places like Seattle. Or take Eden Farms, which is located in an area just a bit warmer than Alaska, but also has its own set of issues when it comes to traditional farming. As their farm manager, Letitia Gibson, explains, the challenges on an island like New Providence within the archipelago of the Bahamas is that we don't get very fertile soil. With the imminent dangers of tropical storms and hurricanes, it poses a threat to traditional farming. Using a 40-foot container and utilizing vertical farming methods to stack crops on top of each other and having different specialized spaces for certain crops, there's so much I can do with a confined space that I was not able to do outside in traditional farming. Freight Farms has active projects in 35 countries and nearly every state in America though they are not the only company working on container farms. A few of the other key players in this space include Canadian company Grocer, Modular Farms Australia, and also Farm Box Foods. Not only are Farm Box Foods growing veggies, but they're using their containers to also grow mushrooms. They can grow over 400 pounds of them in a week in one container. And they're even testing out growing tree saplings to help with reforestation efforts. You may be saying to yourself now, why aren't container farms everywhere? The thing is, the technology and the industry are still pretty new. And with a current average cost of $100,000, investing in a container farm still might be out of reach for many. But let's imagine in a few years it becomes a runaway success. Will container farms and their larger cousins vertical farms ever replace traditional farming? Freight farms is not the solution necessarily, it's, it's a piece of the solution. And the other pieces of the solution are these other vertical farming companies and traditional farming. We're by no means looking to replace a traditional farm. We are just trying to provide access to the pockets of the world that those traditional farms aren't able to reach or in reaching them are creating a more harm than good. In an ideal scenario, Derek believes that in 10 to 15 years, these controlled facilities can be providing upwards of 25% of all of our produce. We know it's more efficient, that it's more sustainable, and brings local food production to areas that really need it. And while the trend is just beginning to catch on, it's very possible that container farms have a bright future ahead of them.